So it was 400 years after slavery that the ancient Israelites would get out of Egypt and after 10 plagues and after having heart, hardened his heart many times, Pharaoh let us go. We fled for our lives. We left in great haste, not even having enough time to allow the dough of the bread to rise. And then we made it to the Red Sea. And upon the arrival, we realized that behind us were the armies of Pharaoh willing to kill us. We were afraid. I was afraid. I want you to turn to somebody over there, you and you and you, and say to the person next to you, I was afraid. I can't hear it. Well, you better believe it. And now turn to your neighbor and say, I don't want to go back. No way. No way am I going back to Egypt. The prophet Moses, the prophet Martin, has given us a dream. A dream of a promised land. A dream of a better world. And we are not ready to give up on that dream. I am not ready to give up on that dream. Are you? No. And so, with the death by drowning in front of me and the death of feral soldiers behind me, I'm really, really afraid. And then, according to Jewish tradition, a man by the name of Nachshon steps forward and he begins to walk into the sea. He walks into the sea up to his knees. He walks into the sea up to his waist. People look on in horror at an apparent suicide. However, when the water got up to his neck, according to tradition, God in his infinite mercy parted that sea. Parted that sea. And at that people, at that time, people understood that Nachshon was a man of faith. He understood that going back meant going back to slavery. He understood that going back meant going back to Jim Crow. He understood that going back meant going back to segregated schools. He only he understood that there was only one way out of that situation. And he knew that it wasn't that way. Because that's where death and degradation was. Death and degradation were behind him but with God's providence and faith. And a life filled with justice and compassion could be his. And so he took step after step. One step at a time and then the sea parted. He turned to his people, this man did. And he said to them, forward together. Not one step back. And they answered, forward together. Not one step back. Friends, the name of this rally today is Taking the Dream Home. Fifty years to the day after the March on Washington, fifty years to the day after the I Have a Dream speech, we have returned to our beloved state of North Carolina to recommit ourselves to that dream. However, what we find, sadly, is a state legislature which in its last time, a session took many misguided, many immoral, many extreme actions which seemed to violate both the United States and the North Carolina Constitution. Friends, all of these initiatives are streaming backwards, but in saying this, let us realize that it's the policies which are misguided and extreme. We do not hate those that espouse those policies. Rather, with persuasive arguments and the spiritual audacity which comes from moral authority, we are going to try to convince them of the error of their ways. This movement of ours has power. It is bigger than any one person. That's what Reverend Barber told me yesterday. We have a diversity of voices, but we have a unity of purpose. So we need you folks to do the following. First of all, I want you to take out your cell phone. And I want you to put down this number in your cell phone or just write it down. It's 202-224. 3121. That is the number of the United States Congress switchboard. 202. I'm serious. 224-3121. You can
can call that number and ask for any senator or representative in the United States Congress. And you're going to call that number, if not today, then tomorrow. And you're going to tell them, or their legislative aide, or whoever picks up that phone, that it is time to restore Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act. And you're going to tell them that you think there ought to be a moratorium in all of the states, including ours, on bills which deal with voting until Congress restores Section 4. And the second thing you're going to do is make sure that all of these yellow cards here, these yellow pledge cards, are filled in so that we can get in touch with you and so that you can pledge to register 25 to 50 people to vote before the next election. Today is the actual anniversary of the I Have a Dream speech. And we are here to say, folks, no, we are not going back to Egypt. No, we are not going back to slavery. No, we are not going back to a society based on racism. No, we are not going back to a society based on classism. No, we're not going back to a society based on the oppression of women and the defunding of our schools. Absolutely not. And we are not going back to a society where the poor and elderly receive even worse health care than they do now. And we are not going back to a time when people of color could not vote or had to pay poll taxes. No. And we're not going back to a time when the voices of students were ignored. And why are we not going back? There it is, right there. Hold that sign up. Not that one. There you go. Because we haven't given up on that dream, baby. We've got it. We've got it. We're not content to accept North Carolina as it is, but with boldness, with boldness, we dream of a North Carolina the way it ought to be. The way the God of the biblical prophets envisioned. A North Carolina that was just, compassionate, and godly. We have not given up on a dream of North Carolina wherein the highest priority is not assigned to profits or personality or popularity, but to people, principles, and outstanding performance. And we have not given up on a North Carolina wherein we care as much about poverty as we do about prayer. And we've not given up on the dream of North Carolina when we are committed to the finest in education for all of God's children. And we've not given up on a North Carolina wherein we care as much about the need for better schools and better jobs and better prison, better neighborhoods as we do about better prisons. And we have not given up on the dream of the North Carolina wherein the values of justice, the values of compassion, and of love are paramount. Today we stand to reaffirm the dream. And we stand, folks, by what is right and just, however risky it may be. We are not content with what is convenient and expedient, however safe it may be. Jewish sages teach us that we would do well to pray as if everything depended on God, but to act as if everything depended on us. The words still ring of an imperishable truth. Prayer alone will never change the way things are. We need God, but God needs us. May ours be a community that prays as if everything depends on God, but acts as if everything depends on us. So I want you to grab the person's hand next to you. Grab the person's hand next to you. And I want you to say one more time, I am not afraid. I am not afraid. One more time, I am not afraid. I am not afraid. Now I want you to take one step forward holding that hand. Take one step forward. <laughs> now realize this, folks. If this was just you not holding on to the hand of the person next to you, you could get lost. <laughs> but if we all step forward together, if we all step forward together, we can make Dr. King's dream come true. So when Nachshon led the Israelites across the sea thousands of years ago, like him, we have decided to walk into the unknown water. 
And we're walking in up to our knees and up to our waist and up to our neck. But we're walking. We're walking. One step at a time. Because we are going forward together. Not, Not one back. step back. Forward together. Not one step back. And forward together. Not, Not one, one step back. Thank you and God bless. Woo!